didn't think I, I actually said retiring. I just, you know, I, I just, I came from a loss, a, a really close decision, close to a win. And, you know, I was just pissed, <laughs> you know, because I basically, you know, I was just, I just lost that fight, so I was really pissed. And maybe I said something about, like, maybe I wanted to get, take a break or, or something like that. Never retired. And, you know, you say something and something else <laughs> come out uh, from media. So it is what it is, but uh, I, I never considered retiring. And, you know, that it wouldn't happen because it's, it's just one of, those things, one of those things you just say, you, you can't just say, you know, because... It's so much harder to really do it. This is what I do. This is what I what I, what I am, I'm good at. It's nothing that you just quit one day and then and you know. So so I ne I ne I would never I, w I wasn't even close to retire. I want the highest rate. I want the biggest pay-per-view numbers. I want to move more t-shirts and more tickets than anybody else. I look at those numbers. And uh, I had all of those records. I retired. When I reti I got beat, all those records are gone now. I used to have the North American Gate. I used to have uh, the pay-per-view. Uh, we were on FS1. I had the FS. I had them all. I've lost them all. And I'm here to get them all back. All. All. Oh, the numbers do not lie. I'm taking them all back. They might walk like me and talk like me, dress, act, not give a dang like me, and they just might be the next best thing, but they are not quite me. And I'm watching these guys, and they're talking about money and who their opponents are and the weight class, and if this happens, who cares about all that stuff? You either want to fight or you don't. And, and one of my main motivations for coming back is pure anger. I sit back as a fan. I watch these guys squibble and squabble got nothing about this. I put this deal together uh, with Coker over three phone calls. I didn't negotiate. I didn't ask for anything. I want an opportunity to fight. That was it. And he'll tell you the same thing. It was as simple as that. I tried to make the fight happen between me and Conor McGregor. We wasn't able to make the fight happen, so we must move on. It's so crazy that when I talked about fighting Conor McGregor, now you got so many other fighters that's in boxing that wants to fight Conor McGregor. But I was the first, once again. I feel honored to be the biggest name in MMA, and in boxing, and I don't even compete no more. If allegedly, it, yeah. at Madison Square Garden, if it happens, yes. allegedly in a couple months. But if it does happen, uh, Eddie's, Eddie's a big that boy. Might happen? And whatever endurance issues Connor may have, he better iron those fuckers out before you go to town with that guy. I don't think Eddie's the best matchup at all. Who would you say is? Well, first of all, Eddie five. Eddie's known yeah. for having a chin. This He's known for having a chin and known for being able to bounce back from getting hurt. He's got massive heart. And he fights at his best when the chips are on the line. Like in the Dos Anjos fight. Nobody gave him a shot in that fight. Who gave him the shot in that fight? He's probably like a at least two to one underdog, right? For He's sure. going into that fight with a dominant champion, a half 
Rafael Dos Anjos, who just got done stopping Cowboy Cerrone in the first round, working Nate Diaz, you know, b beating the shit out of Pettis for five rounds. You're looking at Dos Anjos going, holy shit, this guy might be able to run this division for mm -hmm. a long time. And Alvarez clips him. Merks and him. he looked real good before he, he clipped him. Eddie looks so good now. He looks so fucking sharp. You can't discount the fact he's training with Barboza, he's training with Fr Frankie Edgar. Oh, <laughs>